Hey traders, welcome to another video in this long comprehensive course about options. In this options course, starting with the first video, the plan was to lay down strong foundations about the options basics. So when we start moving forward and getting into more advanced topics, you won't get lost. This what I have done in the first and second videos in the options course so far. Now let's move a step further and start digging into options strategies. Today's video is the first video in the options strategy series. I will discuss long calls thoroughly in great details. First, let's get the legal stuff out of the way. Please make sure to read the disclaimer before proceeding. In brief, I'm not a financial advisor. These videos represent my own understanding and opinion about the topics presented. These are not recommendations of any sort. All information and data presented are from sources believed to be accurate, but accuracy is not guaranteed. So with this out of the way, let's get started. Today we are going to do a quick review about the basics that we have learned so far. We are going to review again options, strategies, characteristics and implied volatility. And then we'll move to the first option strategy that we are going to, discu to discuss today, which is long call. Long is buy. So we will be buying a call option. And finally, we'll end the video with the closing notes as usual. Okay, let's start. This slide and the following slides were covered in great detail in the first and second video, so I'm going to go over them very quickly. We defined an options contract. There are two types of options, calls and puts. When you are long an options contract, you have the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell the underlying. When you are short an options contract, you are obliged to fulfill the contract terms if assigned. You could be a long call or a put and you could be a short call or a short put as we see on this slide. We, we discussed this slide on the first video in great details and I would recommend if you haven't watched the first video to watch it. It's a, it's a nice introduction that cover most of the basics. We have seen this slide before on the first video. So I'm going to go over it very quickly. There are four combinations that you could do with options. You could buy a call, which gives you, gives you the right, but not the obligation to buy a, a fixed predefined quantity of the underlying at predefined price on or before a predefined date. If you buy a put, it will be the same, but you'll have the right to sell. If you sell a call, you'll be, you'll be obliged to sell the underlying. If you sell a call, you're obliged to sell the underlying. And if you sell a put, you're ob obliged to buy the underlying. Then I said that options contracts are traded on exchanges, hence they are standardized. Then we move to options Greeks. Again, quickly, we have five different Greeks. Delta, it's the amount an option price is expected to move based on one point change in the underlying. Theta, 
the amount by which an options price will decrease, decay every day. Gamma, the amount of change in delta for one point change in the underlying price. Vega, the amount by which an options price will change for 1% change in, in the volatility. And finally, the row, the amount by which an options price will change for 1% change in the interest rate. And we noted that four of these gammas affects the underlying the options price except gamma which affects the delta then we move to options strategies characteristics and we said we could look at these characteristics as some type of questionnaire and if you answer them you could find which strategy best suits your trading objectives or your trading style. The first point that you look at was the direction. Are you bullish, bearish or neutral? Next, what is the risk? Is it a limited risk or unlimited risk? What's the expected profit? Is it limited or unlimited? Then the volatility and time and I said that pay attention that these amounts are in relation to the position. Volatility, so we look at the Vega. If Vega is negative, so high volatility will harm your position. If Theta is negative, so time is not in your favor. You must understand this in and out because these are very important. If you don't understand them, send me questions. Uh, you have my email address and my Twitter account on the very first slide uh, and I'll do my best to answer you on time. Then we discussed the implied volatility, we took some time on it actually. And we said that volatility is a measure of the variability in the daily prices of the underlying over a one year period. This is the same as the prices standard deviation. Now pay attention because this is a very important point. When you use an options pricing model, you get a theoretical price for the call and the put of a specific options contract. The volatility variable you use is a historical volatility. You calculate it from the historical stock prices, the standard deviation, the annual standard deviation of the daily stock prices. Implied volatility is an outcome of options pricing model. Now, what do I mean by that? From the options pricing model, you get theoretical prices for calls and put, puts. And then you compare these with the market's prices for the calls and puts. They will be different, of course. When you input the market's prices for the calls and puts in the options pricing model, the outcome is the implied volatility. What is the market implying about the expected range for this underlying stock or whatever? Okay, so far? Great, let's keep moving. Now we move to a new topic, which is options strategies. In my opinion, an option strategy is a trade plan. It's not just executing 
a trade buying or selling a combination of some options leg no I believe that an options strategy is a trade plan which as a whole reflects a, trade, a trader's expectations about future price action for the purpose of generating profit. When you decide to buy a call option, you are expecting the underlying to move higher. You anticipate a higher price as, as we will see in today's strategy long quotes. So it's not important that you just know how to execute a certain option strategy. In my opinion, this doesn't worth anything. It's more important that you define your trading objective from this trade, your plan, and now you may call it an option strategy. Long call. I'll take my time on this because I think it's very important that you understand the steps I'm doing before clicking a button and placing a trade. This is the easiest thing is you want to buy a call option on Apple, go ahead. It's very simple. You want to buy the most complex option strategy in the world, eight legs, it's easy. But this is not what option strategies is about. It's about managing your trade. It's about why you choose this leg. What's your objective? Please keep this in mind. Okay, so now that we know all the basics, let's trade options. First strategy is straightforward. We will buy a call option, as you might have guessed. The first thing that the underlying has to go up by at least a certain number of points, dollars, if we speak stocks, before we can make a profit. And the underlying must make this minimum move before the expiry date. Lot, lot of the time you will be correct about the direction, but the time will not be correct. You are long a stock and you want, it, you want the stock to, to go to $100 and the option expires, the stock is at 98, and then next week it makes 110. Some books and instructors say that buying a call is somewhat neutral to volatility. But in reality, if volatility goes up, it will help your position. The underlying may not move at all, but if for some reason the volatility spiked, you could still see a profit, and a good profit, and of course the opposite is true. Let's say that you bought an options contract right before earnings, when the volatility was at its highest level. Then earnings came out and assume the stock price didn't make the expected move. Remember the expected move? There is a phenomenon called volatility crush. This will definitely reduce the options value. So despite the fact that the stock may be moved in your direction, but it didn't make the move that the market was expecting because of the volatility crash, now your position is losing money. So when you when you, when you when you speak options 
volatility is is extremely important it will affect any kind of position the risk is limited and is equal to the premium you pay this is the maximum loss plus commission of course and theoretically speaking the profit potential is unlimited okay okay so what are we going to do today let's buy amazon call option first thing we do we open an amazon option chain and see what we have see what the market is telling us about amazon options so this what we get the first thing that we will notice is there is earnings coming on 29 of july today is 26 in about two months and the price of amazon is 3285 and it's been up until the time of uh, of this recording about less than one percent anyhow since earnings is on the 29th of july why don't we look at the next available option and we see what we have the next available option series is on 20 august 2021 here can you see that and amazon for 3285 so let's look at a close option to this price we will consider the 3290 almost add the money and we have the following Greeks let me draw a line so you can see them clearly theta minus 0.9 do you remember what does this mean it means that the position will lose 90 cent cents every day I'll show, I'll show you something interesting about theta uh, shortly just let's take a step by step okay this option how much does it cost this is the last price 168 dollars and very important it has 86 days to expire what else do i need to look for the implied volatility is 26 percent so iv 26 percent price 168 dollars 86 days to expire and of course the option is 3290 call August 20. I don't need anything else from this um, from this chain. This is what I need. I zoomed here a little bit more and I replicated the last um, slide. I put all the details in a more neat way, including the Greeks, so you see exactly what we are buying. August 20, the expiry, the strike is 3290. It's at the money. Implied volatility 26%. The price is $168. The Greeks, the delta as we expected because it's at the money it will be very close to 50 and as i said in, uh, on the first video a lot of people consider this as the probability that this option will finish in the money 
so between the the call and the put this is 0.52 this is 0.48 which is 48% and this is 52% this is just an assumption I mean never mind this is just an assumption it's 50% A stock price is 100, what are the odds that it will go up or down? 50-50. This is the philosophy behind it. Theta, we said we are going to lose, it's minus, I should, I should have put minus. And Vega 6.4. Let me show you something interesting about the Theta. We said the theta is minus 0.9. This is the theta curve on after four days. Now, assuming everything else stays constant, same volatility, the same price, uh, we are here. If you look at it, let me let me draw a line so you you can see exactly what I mean. Okay. About even the line is is not is not perfect, but never mind. It's at minus one. Okay. Let's see the next slide. This is fifteenth of June. You see that? And now we were at minus one or roughly minus one. It's more or less the same. Okay. Now next. And now we are at July 15. Okay. Notice. Now it's minus let's say 1.5 we were 0.9 our price will decay by 0.9 of a dollar every day now after about 45 days it's at minus 1.5 50 percent increase in theta Okay, let's keep going. Now we move to 1st of August. And we are here, it's at 2. I don't need to, to do a line, but just to be consistent. Okay, and this is August. So you see, it's rapidly okay decreasing but i'm not going to say decreasing it's increasing the decay is increasing we started at minus 0.9 today the 26th of may theta was minus 0.9 after 45 days it was minus 1.5 and today august 1st we are at minus 2 now it's about two months let's say two months june and july and it doubled in two months when 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 the option get closer to expiry the theta increase rapidly now this is august 10 we only move 10 days see where it is Two point seven minus two point seven. Let's keep going. August sixteen. This is the last week after expiry. This is Monday. August sixteen. And this option is going to expire on Friday, August twenty. Look where is the theta? minus four dollars 
see what I mean? This is what I meant when I said when an option gets closer to expiry, the theta increases rapidly. Okay, so far? Now, let's calculate the market implied daily move. We learned this in the last video, but I'm going to take a step by step just for everyone who is watching to follow along. So the first part, the first line here, this is the details about the options we are considering. Remember, we didn't buy anything yet. We are still analyzing a possible trade. And these are the Greeks. There are 86 days to expire. There are 62 trading days in this 86 days. I counted them. There are 3 days in May, 22 in June, 22 in July, 15 in August. So sum up to 62 days. So the first thing we do, we calculate the market implied move, the daily. I should write here daily. So this is very straightforward. We did this in the last video. This is IV. We have IV. Where is IV? It's 26%. The trading days in a year, we said we will use 252. It gives us 1.637%. So here we are converting from annual to daily. We got 1.637. So we can calculate the implied daily move. This is the strike price. This is the implied daily moving percentage. This is in dollars. From this, we can get the range. It's the, the strike plus minus 53.87. So this is the range. The market is saying that he is expecting Amazon's daily range to be between 32.36 and 33.43. About $54 up or down. Okay. Okay, this is very good, but we have 86 days to expire. How would this daily range help us? Okay, it's good to know that the market is implying that there is about $54 a range in Amazon's move. But we need to find the 86 days. Again, we did, we did a similar example in the last video. I'm going to show two ways to, um, to, to, to get it. Don't, don't get confused. Just follow up with me, okay? The first one, this is straightforward. IV. We have 62 trading days over the 252 days. By the way, this is exactly the same as this. This is the 26. I could write this as 26 times... 1 over square root of 1 is, is 1 like this it's the same thing right so I've done the same thing and it gave us 12.89 the market is implying a 13% move in either direction 13% within the 86 days period. Within the 86 days period. Okay. 
a quick reminder about what we said we're going to mention today. All these numbers, what's the probability that this is going to happen? It's based on one sigma, 68%. Probability, certainty, that this is going to happen. Remember this. We can also calculate the implied move using the daily implied percentage. Instead of dividing by the square root, we multiply. This is the daily percentage here. We multiply it by the number of trading days, the square root of the number of trading days. It will give us exactly the same, the same figure. This is converting from daily to longer period periods. We multiply by the square root. Converting from annual to daily, we divide by the square root. Okay, so implied move. This is the strike price again. Multiplied by the implied percentage move. Give us $424. The market is expecting... Amazon to move up to 424 points in either direction during the options life until expiration during the 86 days of which the market is going to be trading 62 days so we can calculate the implied range this is the IV plus minus the implied move this is the range the market is expecting amazon price to be between 2866 and 3714 until the option expires after 86 days okay so far now, assume that we are interested in buying two Amazon calls for August 20. Okay, we want to buy two Amazon calls for August 20. This is going to be the symbol. This is the symbol. Again, we discussed this in video number one. This is the... Let me change the color. This is the symbol. This is call or put. Date. Strike. Okay, this is the symbol. This is the number of contract. This you don't see on the symbol, of course. And I replicated all the data that we have, so we have it in front of us. And let's see what we are going to do with it. First step, how much is the premium compared to the stock price? If you divide this by the stock price, it would give you about 5%. So, to begin with, you need Amazon to move more than 5% up for you to start making profit on this trade. Okay. Step 2. How much are you, are you risking in this trade? So, we need to find the maximum loss. How we do that? We said it before. I'm going to remind you. We have the premium times the quantity. This is quantity of contract. Because 
we know that the stocks is 100 shares but not all the underlying is 100 units units as as we said crude oil for example is 1000 barrels so you need to pay attention to this point and we are going to buy two contracts the premium is 168 dollars times 100 shares times two contracts this equals $33,600 plus commission of course plus commission but anyhow I know this is a big amount for an example uh, not all of us can afford such a premium but remember that you are long 200 shares of Amazon this is <coughs> about $660,000 with this 33,000 literally you are getting exposure to the move of 658,000 worth of stock amount but this is this is the example I'm using um, just a quick note uh, because I mentioned this um, about the premium amount personally speaking I don't risk more than 3% of my account value in any single trade no matter how tempting it is if if the if the if there is a chance that this trade is going to make i don't know 1000% a rule is a rule you have to respect the rules that you put because you will regret it it takes just one position to go wrong and say you don't respect the stop loss i've been there before so i did this kind of mistakes before now is this a good trade or a bad trade nobody knows but for us to take a decision we need more information we are taking it step by step and let's see what do we have to do next This is the P&L diagram for this option. Okay? I did this on Excel. It's very simple. If anyone wants the, the, the sheet, I could send it to him. Um, it's not an invention. You could find this everywhere, actually. So, anyhow, when you enter this position, you start by minus 168 okay this is the premium that you paid here and let's say that <coughs> Amazon was was at 3290 about around here roughly here let's say it went down let's say after you got in in the position it went south you notice your loss doesn't change this is your maximum loss all this part this is your maximum loss and if Amazon price goes up our loss is starting to decrease we are we are getting back money from what we paid in the premium until we reach the zero the break even at 3458 3, and then we start making a profit when Amazon reaches if Amazon reaches 3700 we have 242 dollars profit per share okay we have 200 shares we're going to make these calculations um, just to, uh, to see exactly how this is done. We need to try to forecast what are the possible scenarios that could happen with Amazon stock price. Because we need to create plans to take action 
if different scenarios happen. Failing to plan is planning to fail. We are not in, in the trade yet. We are still analyzing the trade. So as I said, it's time to see possible scenarios and put a plan for each one of them. Let's open Amazon charts and see what we can get out of them. So what do we have here? This is the daily chart. Now notice that I plotted Bollinger bands at the two sigma and the three sigma. I like to, to, to always do this. This this is in my opinion this is the best way to visualize volatility to see it is there volatility or not the the yellow line the yellow upper limit and the lower limit these are bollinger bands with three sigma and the white one in the middle of course this is the two sigma and I kept the 20 days moving average the same. Okay. By the time I'm, I was preparing for this uh, video, the, the price is 3290, which is uh, the options that we are considering is exactly at the money. It's very important when you're trading options to look at ATR, average to range, because it also gives you a sense of volatility. Let's take a look at the weekly chart and see. Because our option has 86 days to expire, so it's, it's more meaningful to look at the weekly. 86 days it's um, 12 weeks 84 about 12 weeks so it makes more sense to look at the weekly let's look at the weekly the first thing that we will notice these are the 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 three standard deviation values i put them here and as you can see Every time it reaches this three sigma, it goes down. You see, especially here, it tried to break it one, two, three weeks. It failed, and it went all the way down. And then, that's that's why I like the the Bollinger Bands uh, three sigma. This is my opinion. Now look at the ATR of course this is the weekly here we are looking at the weekly so this is the weekly ATR 177 points per week this is what was I think the average was the same I th I looked at it if I'm not mistaken I think this is the nine nine periods nine week moving average I think it was 185 if I'm not mistaken but anyhow you get you get the idea what what i'm doing let's go back to the daily look at these two green lines this formed like a price range it goes all the way back to uh, November, maybe September here. Amazon was range bound, I would say, between 2,950 and 3,500 from September until today. This is for nine, about nine or ten months. Go back to the weekly. You can see the same range here. about 2975 so actually this could be a very good support we should take this into consideration 
and consider the 2950 or 2975 the, the, the two standard deviation as a good support. Let's see what, what could happen. We have, we could put four different scenarios. Amazon could breaks below 2950. We said this could act as a strong support. Or 45 days have passed. Amazon didn't break below the 2950. Nothing looked promising. 45 days into the trade, Amazon goes higher, but not substantially. 45 days into the trade, Amazon broke to a new high greater than 3,500. What can we do with, with, with every scenario? Now, if you don't, if you didn't put a plan, four different plans, and let's assume 45 days have passed, you are in, still in the position and Amazon is at 3,600. You will start thinking while you are in the trade, what would you, wh what would I do? Shall I exit now? It's, it's a very decent profit. Or maybe it's going to 4,000. Or maybe it will reverse and go back to 3,000. You need to put a plan so you don't have to ask yourself these questions while you are in a trade. Trust me guys on this. I've been there and I've done disasters. So please plan your trade. Okay, the first one, Amazon breaks below 2950. You cannot put a stop loss <coughs> while trading options. It's all mentally. So before the trade, We will put a mental stop loss anytime Amazon breaks below 2950. We are going to stop our losses, close the position, end of story. Now we were risking 3,000, 33,600. Now, if this, if Amazon breaks 2950, and we still have time value. Remember when we said we are going to buy this options contract. The strike price is 3290 and this was at the money. Now if it goes below 2950 and the the 168 this is 100 percent time value remember this intrinsic value and extrinsic value that we discussed on the first video the 168 premium is 100 percent time value if after two weeks or three weeks amazon broke below 2150 and we have to close the position we don't have we are not going to lose all the premium we are going to lose part of it i don't know how much it depends on when but you could lose maybe 50 percent so in other words it's half of the risk that you were willing to accept this is this is one of the benefits of putting a plan because if this if you didn't have a plan and it went below 2950 after two weeks or so and you would say maybe it happened because of the the market was weak and it's going to reverse action and it's going to go 
to 4,000. Okay, this, this is wishful thinking. You will go broke with wish, wishful thinking. Because, as I said, it just takes one trade to go bad. Just one trade. Okay, so mental stop loss. If it breaks below 2,950, you're going to close the position. Excellent. Next scenario. 45 days have passed. Amazon did not break the 2,950, but nothing looks pro not, nothing look promising. What would you do? Remember from the, the, the screenshots about Theta that by time the Theta decay will increase dramatically. In 45 days it was from let's say a dollar to dollar fifty and then uh, two months I think it was two dollars and then four dollars one week before ex expiration of course this is assuming that everything is constant the stock didn't move volatility didn't move as I said before the universe didn't move okay here what could you do now when you when we got into this uh, trade from the chart we saw a range and we said there is a potential that Amazon could test the 3500 but after 45 days and we have 86 days remember so we have about 40 days to go and during the last 30 days or 4 weeks, 28 days, Theta will harm us dramatically. So maybe it's a good option that we could get out of the trade with the minimum loss possible. This could be another plan or plan number 2. Third scenario, 45 days into the trade, Amazon goes higher, but not substantially. Let's say it went just for the sake of the, of the example to uh, 3,390. It went 3%, went up about 3%. So what would you do? Again, this is, these, these questions are extremely difficult when you are in the trade. Now, it's very easy uh, to answer me and say, no, I'm going to wait, no, I'm going to go up. But when you are in the trade, when your money is on the edge, these are extremely difficult questions before, beyond your imagination. Extremely difficult question. You don't know. Because <clears throat> you would think, the second I'm going to get out of this trade, it's going... To jump to 4,000. This this what you're going to, to, to tell yourself. That's why I'm stressing make a plan. Nothing is wrong in making a plan. Even if your plan is, is was not perfect. Next time it's going to be better. So it went to 3390. 3000 450 it's flirting with with its all all time high but you cannot see a solid breakout there is no support from volume when when a stock is breaking from a range or to new high it's very important to be supported by solid volume to consider that it's a legit breakout. Keep this in mind. I don't want to go into technical analysis now because I'm going to spend like another three hours. But anyhow, so here you could sell part of the of the of the position. Remember, we bought two, and I bought two on purpose. And I always buy. Uh, 
number of contracts in a way that I could sell part of it if I want to maybe cut loss on 30% or take profit on 40%. I don't buy one contract. If I can't afford at least two, I don't, I don't trade this option. So maybe at this price, we could sell one. At this price, let's say for just to, 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 to do some calculations, let's say it's 3,450 and we still have another 40 days, 40 days to go. How much is our profit? Our strike is 3,290. 3,450 minus 3 to 90. This is equal what? 160 plus time value. Plus time. This is intrinsic value. And we have time value. Time value for 40 days, uh, 340 and it's in the money i don't think it's much but i don't know maybe maybe this this would be like 210 plus or minus i don't know so anyhow this this could be maybe 50 dollars or maybe i'm exaggerating let's say 40 dollars any any amount so what i'm trying to say is you have 40 dollars times 200 shares right this is eight thousand dollars maybe you would sell 100 so you make four thousand dollars this could be an option okay fourth scenario amazon is at new high this is very nice what would you do? Amazon 40 days. Forty days to expire. Amazon at three seven fifty. And everything is positive about the stock. People are expecting very solid earnings that's coming on the 29th of July, which is about 11, 20, 12 days from, from this date. The expiry is August 20 earnings was 29 of July 40 days to expire so this is 20 so we go back 20 days so let's say there is 11 days 12 days to the earnings again this is a very difficult decision when you are in the in the trade what would you do because this is big money if you if you calculate this I'll, I'll i'll do it for you here quickly just to see what what you're looking at um 3750 minus 3290 equal how much is this 4 460 And we have a hundred shares, four sixty times hundred shares times two. This is equal to ninety two thousand. And you paid the say minus thirty two K premium. Just to, to, to round the figures. So this is sixty K profit. 
would you sell at 3750 or wait for the stock to reach 4000 this is the benefit of having a plan of course i don't know what to do i don't know of course i don't know what to tell you to do because each situation is different uh, this is the kind of decisions that you need to take and it's it's I don't recommend that you take decisions during a trade put the plan before the trade put all the scenarios generally speaking when you are in an options trade you have the the following possible actions of course you can close the position you could sell a percentage of the position close a percentage of the position there is something called running we mentioned this on the first video and this could be not a bad option when you are into these different scenarios not not the first one I'm going I'm going to tell you could roll up and roll forward we mentioned this in in the first video but I'm going to repeat them real quickly we you were long 3 to 90 and now the the stock it is at 3750 you could sell the 3290 and you could buy 3750 or even 3800 you could get maybe 90 percent of your money and you are you still have exposure which is not a bad, very bad idea you had 460 guaranteed profit this is 3 this is 5 this is 520 uh, you would get maybe 420 i would say maybe 420 this is running up another option is you could roll forward again you are at, at 3 290 the strike on August 20 you could sell the position and maybe buy 3800 in October 20 for instance this is all forward up and forward what what I said here is up and forward finally the closing notes if you are not aware of every single detail about your trade, you are not ready to trade. Take your time and look at every point I've mentioned, charts, the Greeks, the option chain, the profit and loss, the expected move, the support and the resistance, the, the ranges, everything I said. Of course, plus the technical and the fundamental. But do your homework and be prepared. Now the odds are going to be in your favor that you make a good trade. You remember on the first uh, video I said that we cannot beat the market, but we could have an edge with our work and the effort that we put in our analysis this is the edge I'm talking about you should have yourself mentally prepared to all the possible scenarios if something bad happens you're going to panic if you're not ready and your reactions I, I just put most of the time will be wrong always will be wrong and as I told you it takes one bad to wipe your account try to avoid making decisions under stress 
your emotions will negatively affect your decisions. So the odds are not in your favor. A piece of advice at this stage, don't try to defend your position. Average down, roll down, hedge, and so on. This will add to the problem. It will cost you more money. Please don't do it. Now, we didn't do any technical or fundamental analysis. Uh, I think I would have needed maybe another three more hours at least. Finally, always stick to your original plan. Don't change it while you are in the trade. I hope my explanations were comprehensive and all the steps were clear. On the next video, we are going to buy a put option. Thank you everyone, good luck and have a great day.